Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to focus on uh, volcanoes. We're going to look at uh, what a volcano is and where we find volcanoes and the reason that we find uh, volcanoes at different uh, locations throughout the world. So the first thing you need to know is uh, what is a volcano and a volcano is an extrusive feature. So it's an extrusive a feature um, that forms when molten rock erupts onto the surface. So, uh, extrusive feature that forms when molten rock erupts onto the surface. So the first thing we're going to look at is where uh, volcanoes actually form at. And vol volcanoes form at three different locations. Okay, the so the first one is the destructive plate boundaries. So destructive uh, boundaries. The second location where you can find volcanoes is at constructive boundaries. Constructive plate boundaries. And the third place where you can find where volcanoes form at is an area called a hotspot. Okay, so we're going to look at the first one, uh, which is destructive plate boundaries. And volcanoes form at destructive plate boundaries. And a good example you can use is the volcano at Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Okay, so what you have is um, you've got an oceanic and a continental plate. And the Mount Pinatubo is located in the Philippines, where you have uh, the oceanic and the continental plates, you've got the uh, oceanic plate, which is the Philippine uh, plate, and the continental plate is the Eurasian plate. And what happens here is the oceanic plate, which is the Philippine plate, it's uh, the heavier plate, and it's been subducted beneath the Eurasian plate. Um, it's also it's, Just remember one, one thing, that this is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is, all, which is almost 200 active volcanoes in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So, what, how does this happen? How does the volcano form here? Well, it all forms because of the powerful convection currents uh, that rise within the mantle. And as they move, uh, as the convection currents move within the mantle, okay, it's causing the plates to move in this direction. And uh, the, con the continental plate, which is the Eurasian plate, the, the convection currents are moving in that direction, which causes the two plates to uh, move towards each other. And as they collide, the heavier oceanic uh, Philippines plate subducts. Due to the intense uh, heat and pressure within the mantle, the rocks of the oceanic plate, the Philippines plate, um, start to uh, be subducted and start the rocks start to melt. And as the rocks melt, they then turn to molten magma. One thing to note is that magma con contains uh, lots of gases are inside it and it has a really high silica content and because it's got a really high silica content it actually traps all the gases um, within the, the magma so the thick acidic magma actually prevents all the gases um, from actually escaping so when the magma forces its way up through all the cracks and fissures the Magma is, is very acidic and it's very thick, so it holds all the, the gases within soil and doesn't let the gases escape. And the pressure builds up, okay? And as the pressure builds up, um, it's going to lead to a more uh, dangerous and a more ferocious uh, volcano. So, as the, as the pressure builds up within, within the, the magma chamber and within the, the crust, uh, the mountain uh, starts to heat. And the gases start it will start to expand, and eventually, when the pressure just gets too great, there will be a huge explosion, and all the dust, ash, and lava will all be erupted out into the atmosphere, to the, and uh, the lava will cool, solidify, and turn into rock, and all the ash and gas and dust and particles will fall back down on top of the solidified rock. The next one we're going to look at is uh, volcanoes at constructive plate boundaries. So constructive plate boundaries. Um, is when plates are pulling apart, 
okay so that when the plates are actually pulling apart and what happens then is the the magma is able to rise up in between the the crack relatively easy and it'll fall uh, it will, it'll form a volcano and um what you usually find is you, you usually find shield volcanoes at um constructive plate boundaries An example um of a constructive uh, plate boundary volcano would be a uh, Surtsey in Iceland and this is where the North America plate is pulling away from the Eurasian plate so you've got the North American plate pulling away from the Eurasian plate and what happens how volcanoes actually form here is because again in the mantle you have these convection currents and these convection currents are going this direction which is causing the plates to go left here and in, in underneath in this side in this plate which is be the Eurasian plate, the convection currents are turning this way, which is causing the plate to go right. So what's going to happen is we're going to get separation, and this is what we call constructive plate boundaries. Another name for constructive plate boundaries, um, we can call this divergent boundaries. And as the plates move move apart, um, the magma is freely able to 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 go up between the the crack because the crack is is made for it. Just one thing to note, there's no subduction here um, because the plates aren't in collision so the heavier plate is not is not going to go underneath the other one so there's no subduction. Subduction is when the, the rock starts to melt and turn into molten magma. Uh, the fissures are cracks which are quickly filled by the molten magma so they just, whenever the, the, the cracks like form because the plates are pulling apart, the molten magma will rise up between it um, which like from the mantle um, and it will pour out and the lava will be very very runny and the reason why it's very runny is because it's in low and has a low silica content so the magma is very basic it's thin it's runny and it's how like you kind of would imagine like lava um, and the gases that that, that um, that's within it is able to like freely like uh, escape so they're not held whereas in the, in the destructive plate boundaries the thick magma is holding all the 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 gases within the the volcano within the like within the crust, and this was causing then the the volcanic eruption to be a lot more disastrous and a lot more explosive. So this one, the gases are freely able to escape, and this leads to a less explosive uh, volcanic eruption. And uh, one thing to note is that when the lava actually uh, when it comes out of the volcano onto the surface, it will cool very quickly and it will solidify very quickly solidify just means turn into rock um, and this is usually because of like the the cold ocean water that is around it um, that's within a good example is Iceland like I said and an example of a volcano is Surtsey and the two plates that are separating are the North American plate and the Eurasian plate that's on the mid-Atlantic ridge what we're going to look at is um, a hot spot and this is where we can volcanoes can form so they can form a hot spot and you can see here from the key the different hot spots um around the around the world okay so hot spots now uh, these ones here on the plate boundaries um we won't include them because hot spot is a place on the earth's surface um where there's a large number of uh, volcanoes or volcanic activity and that are not near like plate boundaries okay so an example they can use is, is Hawaii uh, Mauna Loa and what you need to know is that basically a hot spot is a volcanic uh, lots of volcanic activity not near a plate boundary and how a hot spot actually forms is it's, it's plumes of magma that rise um, from within the mantle and what they do is they force their way up through the crust especially in it's quite common and frequent in oceanic crust and the reason why is because oceanic crust we, as we know is very thin and it's much thinner than uh, continental crust so a hot spot is a lot more uh, evident in um, areas where it's an oceanic crust and because it's thinner so it's able to actually the plumes of magma is able to rise and force its way up through the oceanic crust and like I said, an example is uh, is Mauna Loa in Hawaii, and this right where I'm having uh, the dot here, that's exactly where it is. Hotspots are usually away from uh, plate boundaries. Okay, now you can see there there are a few on plate boundaries, but well, you, you it's best to use one uh, away from plate boundaries because that's usually where they are. And there are fixed points in the mantle, and they 
and they do not move uh, with the plates okay so they don't you they don't move with the plate tectonics and um, they're just fixed points within the mantle okay so I just made some a few notes uh, for volcanoes and how they form at destructive plate boundaries this is this is all I've talked through within the, the diagram earlier on so if you'd like to take them down uh, please uh, pause the video and you can jot the notes down okay so that's um, just some of the key points you need to know for uh, why volcanoes form at constructive plate boundaries and um, if you'd like to take down those notes just pause the video now and you can take down the notes before I move on to hotspot okay and this is uh, some of the notes and the key points for uh, why volcanoes form at hotspot areas okay so if you'd like to just pause the video you can take down the key points now so that's it for today's tutorial uh, on uh, volcanoes we looked at where volcanoes form and why they form at uh, each type of location. So the three locations that volcanoes form is at destructive plate boundaries, constructive plate boundaries and hotspot areas. And we looked at reasons why uh, and examples of each one. If you'd like some more videos, please check out our website, examrevision.ie. Thank you.